So welcome to part two of this uh, three-part tutorial on how to create models using Agisoft PhotoScan. Um, so right in the first tutorial, I showed you how to uh, import photos, import masks, uh, divide those photos into chunks corresponding to the top and bottom uh, of whatever we're scanning, uh, aligning photos, and then telling the software to build a dense cloud. So now what we're going to do is show you uh, in the second video how to take those two clouds and align them to one another so we can produce a complete model. All right, so I'm going to bring up here what we had last time, right, which is, so here's our sparse cloud with our bounding box um, put where we want it. I'm going to turn the camera positions off. And now if I click here in this sort of multicolored grid uh, of squares, we can see what's called the dense cloud. So I can zoom in, um, and here it looks kind of like a mesh, but if I zoom in more, you can see these are actually points uh, in a point cloud. So we've got one here, we've got our other side uh, in that other orientation here. So now we want to tell the computer to try to figure out how these things fit together. Um, and sometimes this will work great, uh, and that's what I'll show you first, is when the software is able to figure out um, how they fit together. Sometimes it works less well and we have to take uh, some other steps. So that'll be the second half of this video. So first let's try to get it to do it uh, automatically. Automatically, So I'm going to go Workflow and click Align Chunks. And as usual, uh, we have some options here. So I'm going to say Method Point Based, Accuracy High. Um, and then I am going to say constrain features by mask to tell it to ignore um, the background and don't worry here about pre-select image pairs. All right, so I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to skip ahead here one moment. All right, so I've skipped ahead to where that process is complete. Um, and here you can see, oops, uh, our one side. And now, if we go up here and click this button, Show Aligned Chunks, we can see that it's figured out, uh, based on the points uh, of our point here, um, that they how they fit together. All right, so next, if I bring up the steps again. Um, we've aligned those chunks using point-based alignment, and now we're going to edit uh, those clouds. Okay, so right, we're showing both here, but if I turn that off, we can also still view one at a time. Um, so as before, when we sort of edited that sparse cloud, we're going to want to edit this dense cloud. And a lot of that is just going to be deleting the scale and this putty um, in one of them. So I'm just going to take that rectangular selection tool, select all of that, uh, and click delete. And then I'm also going to zoom in here and look for any areas where, you know, clearly we have bad data. And Right here, um, I'd say that's pr pretty uh, good indication it's actually picking up white dots, um, which is actually going to be from the scale. So I'm just going to highlight those bad data points um, and delete them, turn this guy around, uh, and look for any bad points on the other side as well. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing for this second chunk where it's oriented um, the other way. So, uh, but we want to keep some scale in here so we can just verify later on um, that our model is scaled correctly. So that'll be more in the third video. So what I'm going to do is just cut out from one side of that scale bar. So we have a nice half of it left, but um, nothing that's going to be under where the point is. Also, what I like to do with the scale bars is just cut off the edges, since um, they tend to have some not great data there. Uh, okay. And then, let's just go back in again uh, and look for any areas where we might have not as good data. All right. You don't need to worry about being too perfect here. Um, if there's a few that are still a slightly different color, it's probably fine and isn't really going to make um, too much of a difference in your final model. I'm going to cut out a little bit down there, though. Okay. Oops. So now I'm going to click this guy again to show both sides aligned together. 
and that's looking pretty good. So I'm fairly happy with that alignment. And now, again, bringing back that list, so we've edited those dense clouds. Um, one more thing is if sometimes you'll find, um, and this isn't as much the case on these projectile points, but um, in certain areas you'll see that the data is better um, from one of the chunks than another chunk, um, and so you just want to edit out any areas from one chunk where it looks like the you know data is better um, on the other chunk, and that's going to happen a lot more when you have overhangs, um, so on a core perhaps, but not as much on uh, flakes. Okay. Anyway, so now we've edited the dense clouds, so now we're going to merge these chunks together, and to do that we go workflow. Merge chunks, I'm going to say combine models. We don't have any markers right now, um, so let's not worry about that. And just say OK. And now if I double click, so I select this merge chunk, um, and I'm going to turn off showing all of the chunks. What we have is one chunk with all of the reference points um, combined from both uh, chunks where one's facing up, one is facing down. Um, and then as before, we're going to want to make sure our bounding box, uh, that region cube-ish uh, area, actually fits the model orientation how we want it and actually encompasses everything. So let's just do that quick. All right. And now we want to create our mesh of our points and our scale bar. So how we're going to do that is workflow, build mesh, um, surface type, leave it at arbitrary, source data, we want to make sure that's the dense cloud as opposed to the sparse cloud, which is the first cloud we get that doesn't have as many reference points in it. Um, polygon count, this is, you know, how big you're going to want it. I tend to make it pretty big, so in this case uh, the high would suggest 180,000 polygons, I just put that at 500,000. It's easier to uh, make things smaller later. You can't make them more detailed, um, though. Uh, here, um, interpolation I'm, and point classes, I'm just going to leave on those uh, default. Okay, so let's click OK. Uh, and then usually this step is pretty fast. All right, now, as you can see, we have more options up here. So if I click this guy, which shows the solid mesh, we have our complete point in mesh form. All right. So that's how to uh, align and merge and create a mesh um, when it plays nice with you and aligns those two chunks um, using point-based alignment on its own. Um, but sometimes we have a little more problems than that. And this is when we have to manually align chunks. So I'm going to bring up an example of that. Okay, so in this case we have uh, a dent two dense clouds, so I'm going to turn off one. So if we view them one at a time, um, you can see this flake looks pretty good, and this flake looks pretty good, but what it's done is it's aligned those two together based on our scale. Uh, on the bottom, which, right, is not what we want. So the way we can stick these two together is by using markers, okay? And the way I like to do this is to essentially make these two sides uh, each their own mesh, uh, put markers on, which are essentially reference points that you say um, are equivalent to another uh, put texture on those, and then align those two meshes together. Okay, so how do we do that? A few steps. So again, we're going to use a batch process, so workflow batch process, and I'm going to do two things. So first, I'm going to say um, blah, 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 build mesh. Uh, again, leaving those on the defaults uh, pretty much except for uh, a high custom face count. And then I'm going to say 
build texture and this will put oops I'm sorry the texture uh, you know on those models so we can add reference points more easily um, so in terms of build texture since I haven't talked about that yet mapping mode generally the at generic all cameras for the texture from um, blending usually I you want to put this at mosaic or average um, I tend to like average a bit more uh, since it blends things a little better and then I put texture size uh, pretty big at 4096 texture count one that means it will create one JPEG um, and then I usually don't bother with color correction because um, it doesn't generally help that much so I'm going to go OK and then let's say go all right so I'll let this think uh, and I'll be back with you in just a minute all right so now it's been a couple minutes and the process is finishing up and now we can see we have these options here so I'm just gonna show one at a time um, and in theory right you couldn't clean these up before but since we're actually re you know gonna come back to these dense clouds later it's not um, too much of an issue Oops. Oh, one moment. Okay, so just to show you what happened, we have a mesh, uh, but not a texture, and that's because I forgot to link to where these photos are. So, right, PhotoScan always needs to know where the photos are uh, to function properly. So if I double click, it'll get, you know, this sort of pixelated version and say it can't find it. Um, so since I actually know where these are, and this is going to happen if you're moving things from computer to computer, um, so I'm going to right click and say change path. Um, I know it's on this processed to folder I put on the desktop. All right, I relink to that, uh, and then I'm just going to say do it to everything. Okay. So now, to know where those photos are, and I can go back here and tell it to build the texture for those two sides. All right, now we're back, and as we can see, since we told the software we're actually to find those photos, uh, we've got two textured models now. All right, so the next step is to add markers. Uh, that is reference points we put in manually. Uh, so in this case, since I've on this flake uh, marked out some things already, we can use those um, as reference points. All right, so if we got our uh, arrow, I'm going to zoom in and put, uh, in this case with the ventral facing me, let's go a marker here. Uh, let's put one top of the seven. Um, and you want to put these markers, of course, you know, at points where you're going to see them um, on both halves of your model, uh, or else you're going to run into some trouble. All right, so we want these to be sort of spaced out uh, around, you know, what we're going to be able to see. Um, and the further apart, the better um, uh, our alignment's going to be. So I'm going to use this little dot as one. And let's use this dot down here. Now let's go to our other side. Um, let's just put a couple more. So I usually like around eight or so um, reference points. Let's see what's going to be visible on both. Okay. All right. So I've got seven points. That should be pretty good. Um, and a trick I like to do now, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit, is to actually take a screenshot of where these points are located. Um, so I'm going to use the snipping tool and just click and drag that screenshot. Um, and now I'm actually working with two screens, so I'm going to bring that over to my other screen. And now when we go to our other uh, chunk, I can use that uh, reference of that screenshot to know where to put the markers on this side. So in this case, one is going to go over here. And I'm looking at these, this on my other screen. Two is going to go up here. 
three. Um, and if you don't have, you know, very nice points uh, like I do here, um, you can also, but you have better morphology, you can do it based on landmarks uh, from this just plain mesh view. But I'm going to go back to my textured view because I have pretty good texture in this case. All right, point four. And let's see, sometimes this gets a little more difficult. Hopefully these are all correct. Point 0.5. Now, since I took a screenshot of only the other side, right? I'm going to go back to this side. And then just screenshot that as well. Okay. Move that over. Go back. And then let's just line this up. Oops. Right, so point 0.6 is going to be down here. And then point 0.7. Let's see. I think we got this guy. All right. So now we have seven points uh, in theory on the same place on both of these models. So now we can align again. So say workflow, align chunks, and this time I'm going to change the method from point based to marker based. Um, and you can leave off fixed scale. Uh, so fixed scale means it won't change the scale of one to another. Um, but since we haven't actually created a scale yet, we don't want to worry about that. All right, so I'm going to click OK, and this should be pretty quick. And now, hopefully, when I click Show Align Chunks, ta-da! We have the two chunks aligned to one another. All right. So yeah, it looks like we did pretty well with aligning those points. We'll turn those photos off. And now if I go back to the dense cloud view, we have two dense clouds, uh, not just meshes, aligned to one another. So now I'm going to use the same uh, operations I did before. So let's cut out that bad data. Um, I'm going to do this real quick, right, because I already showed you this on the other one. So that was a little overzealous, um, but anyway, you would probably want to take a little more time than this. I'm going to say that's good enough on that side. Um, let's do this too. Okay, uh, and now just as before, what we can do is workflow merge chunks. Um, in this case, we can also merge the markers, so it'll uh, keep those markers. Um, so why not? Let's say okay. Now we see we have that one dense cloud. Uh, make sure everything's in that bounding box. And then as before, Workflow build mesh. Drum roll. And if we click, we have a nice mesh, both sides uh, merged together. All right, so we've aligned both ways, um, and we have meshes. Uh, and now for the next video, part three, it's going to be uh, the same for whether we did uh, this kind of aligning or the manual aligning. All right, so I'll see you in the next video, and we can finish up uh, making our model in AngieSoft PhotoScan.